In this video, we'll be looking at library includes and forward declarations in C++. For the examples in this video, I've created a basic C++ character class and made a child blueprint class of the C++ base class. Whilst I'm in the blueprint class, just make a quick note of the default components included as well, which are just here. We've got the capsule, the arrow, skeletal mesh, and the movement component. And another thing to note before we go into the differences between the includes and forward declarations is that Unreal now uses the include what you use system, or you'll see it as the IWYU. And in short, this just means that when you're creating a new class, it will include only what's needed to be referenced for that class to compile. And this is going to be a project wide thing if you're using the new latest versions of the Unreal Engine. And this is intended to reduce the compile times and increase performance, but it does mean that you will need to include the dependencies for anything that you include in your created classes, such as many of the components that you'll see here. Now, that's not 100% relevant to the topic, so that's just a brief overview, but you can find more on the subject on the web page with the link that I'll provide in the description. Okay, so over in the character base class, you can see that there are already a few includes at the top of the script. The first one is the core minimal, and this is the newer include based on the IWYU system that I mentioned a moment ago. So you should now see this in most, besides a few which are detailed in the documents page that I've suggested reading through. You then have the include to the parent character class and the generated.h of the character base class. Now this final one's really important in the header file as the generated.h always needs to be at the bottom or the last include in the list. So if we just take a quick look of what this actually means by taking our example character class, in short, this means that we'll have access and more importantly, this class will have knowledge of everything in the parent character class. So as C++ is a top-down compiled language, so it's compiled from the top to the bottom, if we take a peek into the character class, all of this that you can see here, references included will all be loaded into the character base class that I've created. And this also highlights the benefits of an include what you use system, because of course we obviously don't want to be doing this for a lot of classes and bringing in a lot of different references that may not be required or used in just all of the classes that you create in a project. So at the top of the character class, then we can see the second way to make sure that the class we're in has a reference to the other classes that are gonna be defined below. Now these are called forward declarations. And here we can see the main ones that make up the character class that I mentioned in the blueprint. So we've got all of the components, the skeletal mesh and things like that. Okay, so up to this point, this has been a lot of name throwing and just theory. So let's jump back into the pawn class this time because it's slightly more basic and we'll need a few extra includes here to get things working. And we can implement something and make this a little bit more practical. So let's say that we wanted to start recreating the character class a little bit. So we need a capsule component. So to get one of these, we use the U capsule component and we'll name this one capsule. We can then see here that it's throwing an error immediately. If we hover over the text is telling us that the U capsule component is undefined, meaning that the pawn class doesn't know what a capsule component is or how to handle this. So to solve this, I can forward declare the class type of U capsule component. And this is done by simply typing class and then the name of the component or class that you want to reference. Now again, when the compiler is reading down the code, this basically tells it, don't freak out, but you're about to be asked to define a capsule component. So just remember about it. And this actually works a little bit differently to how the includes at the top of the class work. So I'm also just gonna add some really basic macro definitions here so that we can see this in the blueprint. If we compile this, just to make sure that everything's been successful. And you can also forward declare a class when you define a variable like so. So this is just as valid. However, it does mean that the class will only know about the other class that you forward declared on this line. As a personal preference, just so that I can keep everything in its own kind of little section. And also in case I needed to add a second or a third capsule component or static mesh or anything like that, I tend to leave all of my forward declarations at the top of the class. It's a little bit tidier. And like I said, that way you only ever need to type it once because the rest of the class below that will know what the reference is and it will store that. Next, I'm just gonna go over to the code file and actually create and implement our capsule collider. I also want to set its position in the hierarchy using the function within the capsule class, which is the setup attachment. Now, once again, because only the header has a local reference to the capsule collider or the capsule component, I'm actually unable to access these functions. As shown, if I press the dot after the capsule, where there should be some kind of autocomplete, it just kind of gives up. So this is where includes come in. So the first thing I need is the location in the code library to include the class. 
And if you're using Visual Studio, there's a really easy way to find this as it's not something you're likely to just know off the top of your head, at least for a little while. So to find a reference of the uCapsule component in the code, right click and select, and then go to definition. This will take us to the capsule component header file. And then if we right click on the capsule component in here, but this time select peak header code file, we can see just here that the include for the capsule component is components forward slash capsule component dot h. So that is what we want to include in our code file in our class so that we have access to everything in here. And because we don't have a generated dot h include here, that's only some, something we need to worry about in header files. We can put this either above or below the character base include. This means that you have full access to the capsule component class and any of its public functions or variables. And you can see here, as I do the same thing again, I actually get the full IntelliSense this time, recommending the things I can use in the predefined setup attachment function, which will allow me to pass in the root component for this to be attached to. Now, for those of you not using Visual Studio, Studio, you may not be able to jump into the defining classes that way. Uh, it's still really easy to do this and find the include pass with the updated Unreal Engine C++ documentation. So if we go over to Google, if you just type in the name of the class all in one that you're looking for, so in this case, it's going to be the U capsule component. Due to the unique naming convention, this should be the first result displayed, which in this case it is. Then in this page, just at the top, we can see the same header include path. So generally you're gonna to want to include everything after a public or classes folder. In this case, it's gonna be the classes folder. And we can see if we remove everything before that, we can see we get the same result that I found in Visual Studio, which is components forward slash capsule component dot H. And to be honest, even though I have the ability to use the VS system in that way to find the include path, I actually don't like jumping between files that way too often. And I tend to just use this approach with one of my tabs open. On the other screen, I'll just quickly head over to Google and find the specific header if I've forgotten it this way. And that is pretty much it. So if we build this now uh, with all of the includes done and assuming there's no spelling mistakes or anything like that, we should be able to get this built, open the pawn class up in Unreal, and we should see the capsule component there in the same way we do with the character class. So to recap here, and to give a little bit more information about the differences between the two types of including or referencing other classes, a forward declaration will basically let your class know about other classes, but it won't bring in the whole file, so it won't give you access to the functions or the variables within. It simply lets the class that you're defining it in know that another class exists, so that when it comes to referencing or creating a component, for instance, in this case, it knows what the component is, but that's as far as that goes. So it's the cheaper option. Whereas the includes at the top, this will include the entirety of the other class, all of the functions, the variables, all of the references and things like that, that that class holds. So it's generally going to be the more expensive option. And that's why you'll see the forward declarations a lot more in the header files, because you don't access other classes in header files. You don't ever call functions or things like that. And you'll see a lot more includes in the code files, because of course, that's where you're going to need to pull the functions and the variables and things like that. So hopefully that makes a bit more sense now about how and where to use the different types of includes and the forward declaration. And you've also seen a couple of different ways that you can find the header path for including the default classes. So if you've enjoyed the video and found it useful, please do leave a like, share the video and consider subscribing to be kept up to date with more videos like this as they're released. And a big thank you to all of my Patreon supporters. It is of course your support that allows me to keep making content like this. And if you wanted to show your support for the channel for as little as $1 per month, then do check in the link in the description below. As ever though, thanks for watching and I will see you all next time.